In this video, I'm going to install the crankshaft, hopefully for the last time, uh, torque everything down with the ARP side bolts, and then check the crankshaft end play. Very important piece. Before I put the bearings in there, I'm going to go through and I'm going to clean uh, the bearing surface where the bearing goes, also the machine surface where the, the main cap sits on, and I'm also going to clean the uh, threads of the studs just to make sure there's no, uh, no contaminants on there. Now I can take my main bearings, I'm going to give them a wipe down and then install them all in the block. So the bearings are in now, they're all nice and level with the machine surface of the block. Now I'll put some assembly lube on the bearings. And give the crankshaft main journals a quick, quick wipe, wipe down. Now we can set the crankshaft in place. I'm going to make sure not to touch the studs, nice and slow. Remember, we're not going to spin it right now, I'm just going to let it sit right there. Okay, now we can put this little half moon thrust washer in. This is the difference between, this is one of the main differences between the different uh, bearing kits for these engines. This is specific to the Texas, it's going to have this little uh, half moon shape and there's cutouts in there. Those cutouts are going to go towards the uh, crankshaft. So it's going to slide in between the engine block uh, and the crankshaft. We're going to put some assembly lube on here first. Okay, I'm going to coat this. Now this slides right in between. Stick it in and then kind of turn it around in there. Here's a better look. The thrust bearing goes in between the uh, the engine block and the crankshaft, and the slide with the the side with the slots is going to face towards the crankshaft. That's to allow oil to get to the friction surface as the crank spins. I'm going to put assembly lube on the the journals of the crankshaft, the main main journals. Now our main caps back here. As I put them on, I'm going to make sure that the bearings are still in place. Uh, put a little bit of assembly lube on them and then just gently drop them down. All right, with the main caps in place, make sure all the arrows are pointed forward and the correct ones are in the right spot. Remember, they're marked on the side, one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the washers uh, of each one of the bolts on. And now that the washers are in place, I'm gonna go ahead and put a dab of uh, this ARP fastener assembly lube on each, on the top of the washers and on the threads of each one. Now I'm going to put just the large ARP nuts on here. And now I'm going to slowly snug down uh, one through four main caps. I'm going to go one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm not going to do number five yet because before we snug number five down, we need to wedge the crank forward and the main cap backwards. So. Just snug them down lightly. The book calls for like 80 uh, inch pounds. So the way that I do uh, number five is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and suck it down nice and slow, evenly on both sides until it gets down to the bottom. And now I'm gonna back those screws off, back those nuts off. Now I'm gonna rotate the crankshaft around just a little bit so that. Uh, when I put my wedges in there, basically my screwdrivers, uh, it's got the counterweight to put against. I just use two screwdrivers, uh, stick them down in there, kind of push them in, just wiggle them, jiggle them down in there a little bit. And the idea is you're seating that thrust washer uh, so that you get your end play of your crankshaft. So you don't have to force them down in there, just kind of jiggle them in a little bit, and then I'm going to hold it, and at the same time, tighten it down, snug it back down. Now with everything snug down, you can kind of go back and forth and you can feel just very lightly pry back and forth and you can feel the end play of the crankshaft. It's gonna go back. This one feels about six thousandths. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my, my small side nuts on there. So one of the things that kind of bothers me sometimes when I put these together is uh, the studs. See how the stud is 
So these are snug down and you, you got like two threads uh, on the big one and probably three, three threads on the small one showing. Uh, basically the nut isn't down there far enough. So I like to have them closer to flush. So before I start torquing all these down, I'm going to uh, loosen up the nut and then back that stud off a couple of turns so that I get more uh, thread engagement on the nut. And now you can see that the stud is more even with the top of the nut. Now I'm going to go through and torque the outside, the small nuts, to 90 inch pounds. So I'm going to go uh, one, two, three, four, but I'm not going to go to five. And then I'm going to do the inside to 90. Again, I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And then we've got to wedge it and then do all four of these. All right, now I'm going to do my wedge again. And once I get it wedged in there, then I'm going to torque the outside down. Now keeping my wedges wedged down in there, I'm going to do the inside ones to 90. I'm going to do all the little ones uh, to 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that pattern is going to be for all of them. Uh, but first I'm going to start with the outside little ones to 20. And when you get to the back ones, uh, I like to uh, at least get them up to 20 with the wedge in there. Uh, but after 20, I don't leave the wedge in there. So I'm going to do the outsides to 20 with the wedge. Now I'm going to do the inside to 20. Okay, now I'm going to do number five again. I'm going to work that wedge in there. Okay, now everything's at 20. We take our wedge out, make sure that the crank still spins freely. And then also we can make sure that we still got a little bit of end play. Now I'm going to go through and do 25 on the little ones. Now I'm going to bump the big ones up to 30. And finally the big ones up to 60. And again you can make sure that your crankshaft still spins now that they're... Now the main caps are torqued down. Now I'm going to remove all the adjuster screws from the side of the block. And as I put them back in, I'm going to put a little bit of this uh, ARP thread uh, lube on there. Just snug them down. And the adjusting screws get torqued to 90 inch pounds. And for the side bolts, I'm going to use ARP part number 1565001. I've already got them laid out here. Now the first thing I'm going to do to these is I'm going to take a little bit of RTV and I'm going to put it along the base of the of the bolt on all of them. Just a thin little coat because this is going to help keep the oil that's sloshing around in the crankcase from coming out the side of the block. Now as I put the bolts in I'm going to put a little bit of uh, this ARP uh, fastener lube on the threads. Now finally we're going to torque these side caps down to 30. And now with the side caps tightened down to 30, everything is torqued now. So the crank is officially in. You can make sure it still spins freely and it does. Now we'll check the end play. Checking the end play is pretty easy. I'm going to do it using this uh, clamping dial indicator. Uh, these are really handy. I got this from Harbor Freight, uh, you know, to Pittsburgh brand. Now, but this works for a lot of different things for checking brake run out, axle run out, uh, and it's quick, just clamps on, and then you can get some readings on there. Okay, so with this set up, uh, I got it uh, clamped down and tightened down, um, and I got the, the gauge zeroed out. Now we can just go back and forth. I'll pry it to one side, then zero it out again. So now it's on zero. And that is right at six thousandths. You want between five and twelve thousandths. So six thousandths on a brand new engine, that's good. Now our crank is completely installed. Got our side caps torqued. Everything's good.